How are you? Asleep? Not yet. Where is my musician? Here is it. <laughs> Fabio Barovero. Are you ready, Fabio? Sorry for my Amharic. I think there is just one person speaking Amharic here, isn't it? Where is it? How is it? Pretty good? Because you know, I'm half Ethiopian, half Italian. I was born in Mogadishu, but I only speak Italian. So at least I try to, to recall and to build a sort of return with my music to, to the cradle. Uh, through, through, through the language. So I don't speak these languages, but I try to, to, to learn and to, to improve. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me here in this wonderful place and this amazing meeting. The pictures that you, you saw in the video are memories of my family, most of them taken by my father in Mogadishu, in Somalia, where he met my mother. Although we are the very end of uh, this meeting, please allow me to go to, back to the very beginning when I first received the invitation and I had to, to read the title of the conference. The first word was race. At first sight, I thought that this word was standing for competition, race. What was was it about a prize, maybe? 
Then I realized, with a little shock of mine, I must confess, that race was about origins. Let me explain the reason of this little shock of mine. Maybe it has been already said today, I don't think so, but in Italian, the translation of race is razza, a word that sounds very bad to me. Because it puts human beings in a biological classification. So razza, to me, is not cultural, it's scientific, genetic. Therefore, the notion of race applicated to a cultural context has huge risks, like stereotypes, mental inflexibility, sterile strictness, and God only knows how many other implications it might have. I'm half European and half African, and the word half itself has a rigid connotation. However, let's say that my father was Italian and my mother Ethiopian. This is not completely correct. My mother was born in Somalia from Ethiopian parents, so what a big mess. In which of these categories would you put me? In what race? Hybrids, let's say hybrids like me, feel like we are a sort of a scientific experiment, the combination of different qualities of blood, and this is, frankly, crazy. As a woman, as an artist, I had to deal with this problem of undefinedness, a problem that was not mine. In many situations, I was too black to be Italian, too white to be African. Can you imagine what does it mean for an actress like me? I was somewhere in the middle. Let me say that from this problematic but very, very rich and special point of view, I could see the insanity behind the obsession for classification, definition, and separation. I always thought that we are all mixed. I think that every single human being is a result of a peculiar complexity. And this, the, this is the word that I want to submit to your attention. Complexity, a key word, an explanation, maybe a solution. Against the dangerous, for me, dangerous notion of race and against the simplification of definitions, I rather set the idea of complexity. Complexity versus race. But the conceptual refusal of the word race is not felt by everybody I saw today. For instance, I know that especially in the States, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, among the Afro-American communities, the reaction of someone has been to build a sort of myth around this word, to embrace it, its meaning, as something to defend and to be aware and to be proud of. This mental attitude reminds me of something. So again, in this perspective, where would I belong? What kind of pride should I develop? I had to answer to these kind of questions very soon in my life, when I was at school, at the primary school, when during the 70s in Italy, there were very few families like mine around. My personal answer was based on the idea of origins and race as something coming out, not from a group of similar people, but from my own genealogical tree. A genealogical tree is a sort of recipe of complexity, and we are all the products of billions of recipes. In this place, in this wonderful cradle of the Renaissance, I strongly want to say to you that people who are the product of different cultures and different ethnical groups can found a sort of new humanism, a system of thought that focuses on the humans and their values, capacities, worth, and personal history. And by saying this, I'm not ignoring racism. I experienced it. 
Moreover, I'm deeply aware of the dangers of the individualism in the capitalism system. But in these modern societies, we should start again from the respect of the single human being, his diversity and his specific history. To represent my origins, I started from the specific signs on me and around me. I have a sort of line on my belly here, on my belly, I, I, I won't show you. It divides it into two parts, the lighter one and the darker one. It's a very strange and funny tattoo, a natural tattoo. I have it here on my body. It's just like having my both parents at the center of my body. I carry them with me wherever I go, whatever I do. This line is a symbol of a union of what is commonly felt like opposite. My mother and my father, I'm the daughter of this union. That's why I called my very first album seven years ago, Jitka, that in the Somali language means the line. You know, on this line, I walk every day. I try to find a sort of balance. On this line, I speak now. On this line, I live. On this line, I dance. On this line, I sing. <laughs> You know, here yeah. on oh, my body, I've got this line. Alo sheda wahai mara yo jika jika he shiska. Alo sheda wahai mara yo jika jika he shiska. Sidi ilo kuar er tadu er kayo bad. I school this clear statement of complexity of mine, even my first record company expected me to represent the cultural tradition of a precise and entire ethnic group. You know, there is a big common need of a point of reference. One culture, you belong to one culture, one community, belonging to a precise geographical space. The problem was, for instance, where to put my record, I mean the physical copy of my album. If you have an album uh, of Beyonce, you know where to put it, in which shelf of the, of the record store, isn't it? You know where, where? In the pop music, maybe. But where to put mine? Somalia, Ethiopia, 
Africa, Europe, Italy, world music, pop music, what are you? When you don't fit to any of these categories, even the journalists look at you with some suspicion. The society here in Italy and in Europe as well, by the way, my first record company was British, is not ready to make the walls fall. They are building new ones instead, physical and mental. Everybody needs categories like drawers. Categories maybe to define better the economical targets, the markets, the consumers maybe. Who am I to judge the belonging of a human being? Who am I to judge if a man or a woman does represent in a more satisfying way his or her belonging to a race or a group of people? Black, white, colored, diaspora, economic migrants, refugees. If there is, uh, I feel there is not enough a mental freedom. And I'm sorry to say that in, this is also a problem in the medias as well among the intellectuals in Italy and even the, among the African ones. It's a paradox, but culturally, I really think that in a certain way, we are less free and open-minded than during the last century. For instance, world music was born in the 90s, now it's dead. And the real ethnic minority in terms of cultural rights is composed by hybrid people like me that don't recognize themselves in a specific group. I belong to all and each of these categories I mentioned. But society, medias, intellectuals push this obsession for identity and our existentialist question is, where is my home? Where do I belong? Yet now, in Amharic, yet now. I still remember the children in my mother's country, in Ethiopia, running behind me and shouting, you, 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 you. It was a, an innocent way to separate themselves from the foreigners and to, to call them, you are a foreigner, you, you, you. Am I a foreigner here in this sort of cradle? You and me, not us, I was treated as a foreigner there. And at the same time, here in Italy, people still say that after a graduation, after many work here, I do speak Italian pretty well. So, where? Where do I belong? Where is my heart? Where is my home? My father's eyes, my mother's embrace. Identity grows up in the painful but rich and fertile field of the undefined. My father, Guriel Kena O Dume, Belet Kena O Dume, Wendem Ahato, Intia Dalu no Kodi, Gaman Kena no Doho. Yet no, I get it. Yet 
Yet yeah, no, your butter in. Yet yeah, no, I get it. Yet yeah, no, you're the blood. Yet yeah, no, your butter in. Yet yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. Let's jump to the solution. So I will sing, I will sing the, the last song. So I speak about my grandmother. Her name is, was Abebech. I told you that my recipe is the, is the genealogical, is the, 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 the family tree. In this recognition act, I found important archetypes to help a deep understanding of who I am. So to find the origins of a sort of pain I was feeling for a sense of eradication, I had to investigate on my African grandmother figure, a bebech. The grandmother is the female archetypes that transmits a subsequent movement to the lives in the family tree succession. This figure is the heritage of every woman in the matriarchal line that goes back to the mother and up to the mother's mother. I recognized in her the origin of my existential distress. I like this word more than the word roots, more than the word race, because origin com comes from the Latin os oris, which means mouth. Mouth is also said orifice, orificio. My singing voice that comes out from here digs like an instrument, a tool, and reaches out to her, to Abebech, to my grandmother, and tells what is still unsaid. She was Ethiopian. When she was 14, she was kidnapped by a Somali asker. You saw this maybe in your in your Slides, you saw that th this figure is a member of the Somali military force fighting for Italians against e Ethiopians during the colonization war. This man kidnapped her and took her in Somalia. So she spent the rest of her life in Mogadishu. Many years after, she married an Ethiopian man, a prisoner in the concentration camp, Italian camp, and gave birth to eight children. The first of these children is my mom. But my grandmother, Abebech, was feeling chronically a foreigner. She didn't know where to belong. And I think she gave to her offspring, to me as well, her first nephew, this kind of sensation. I was feeling, and she was feeling, displaced. At a certain point in Mogadishu, she stopped walking with no reason. She was paralyzed. And no doctor could, could give any, could any explanation of what was going on, because it was due to a sort of somatization of her eradication. So, sitting on the doorstep like every day in Mogadishu, one day a tall man passed close by. He was thin, with afro hair that seemed a sort of halo. He was from Ethiopia, just like her. And they began to speak in their language that nobody could understand. Ababech explained her status, her mysterious paralysis. Then the man asked her family to prepare a big fire. And he took out from his tunic two long roots. He said that those roots were coming from Ethiopia. Then he asked my grandmother to lay down on the ground and to uncover her legs and her back. When the roots were red hot on the fire, the man pushed them against her flesh in four specific points, at the lower back and behind the knees. 
There was a smell of burning flesh in the air and my grandmother was trembling but she endured the sufferance and she didn't scream. The man said, your body does everything to stop and look back. You and your descendants will feel the distance like a disease because you will be a migrant. Your migrant footsteps will be so many that the return will not recognize a house anymore. But you have to heal and let the walk walk. The man didn't ask for money. After he finished, he took his roots and walked away and no one ever saw him again. The same night, my grandmother started to walk again, completely healed. This is a true story. And it has also a deep symbolic meaning to me. This meaning is, I think, the answer to all of my questions about identity. To walk again, to have the courage to face the world, we should first discover, then take care and heal our own complicated origin. <laughs> Yet now, yet now, it's I, it's I, it's I, 
Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Ciao, Fabio Barovero. So I get the last word because I had the first one. On behalf of Dipti and Deb, thank you all for participating, coming, and I mean the staff, NYU Florence staff, faculty, and most of all, all of you students. And a very special thanks to all the students who participated, organized this, thought about it, planned it, and performed. Really did an amazing job. Thanks so much. <laughs>